so so hello guys welcome back to my channel so for today's episode as you can see from the title we're going to be talking about a very touchy subject on the sims community being disabilities and neurodivergence okay <laughs> so i know this video is not going to be a popular one because a lot of people do not like the subject but I decided when I started this channel that I wanted to make content that made me proud and happy of what I was doing. So I'm gonna make sure that my content is always about what I want to do, what makes me happy, and what I wanna put out there. So I'm not gonna concentrate only on what's popular, but also on what I want to do. So with that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's get it. When I talk about physical disability, I'm not just talking about what everybody pictures, which is someone in a wheelchair. It can be someone that has scratches or that has a hearing impairment or it's blind or is deaf or someone that breaks their bones very easily. What I want, like the point that I want to get across is that if I want to include, for example, cast in my game, maybe I have a sim that has a physical illness that makes their bones break very easily. So this will be a physical disability. It's not just the random person that had an accident and broke their arm once. What I mean is that certain elements can actually help to easily portray the lives of people that have a physical disability, but not always the most obvious ones. I also want to talk about neurodivergence. What I mean by this is any type of mental illness or anything that includes mental health. It doesn't have to be straight up a mental illness, but anything that can actually reflect how different and varied the mental health of my Sims can actually be. So as some of you may know, the Sims team published something about disability quite recently, but I'm not going to include that in my video too much because, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but usually what the Sims team says and what they actually do are two completely different things. <laughs> and more often than not, they say they will do something and they either don't do it or don't do it as we expect them to. So I don't want to waste too much time talking about something that might happen, might not happen. So I'm not going to touch on that. So the way this video is going to work is, as you can see, I've been putting up in the screen different custom content that you can find for The Sims 2, The Sims 3, and The Sims 4 that can actually help you have more visibility in your game for your disabled Sims or your Sims with uh, different mental illnesses or anything related to uh, mental health. I'm going to be putting down the links for each and every single item that I'm going to put up in the screen. I'm going to put uh, their link on the description box. Just something to have uh, in the back of your mind, guys. I'm putting up this video today. Tomorrow, one of those links might not work. I'm not going to be updating this constantly because it's a lot of work. But if something breaks, I can't just edit the video and take it out. So I just hope this links uh, still work whenever you're seeing this video. So first, what do I think about having disability and mental health being represented in the game? Well, I do think there's certain visibility of mental health in The Sims. Just think about how Sims, when they get their social motive very low, they either get the social bunny or they get the therapist. So there is a certain representation that seems to need to engage with other Sims and that things can go really wrong that way. Can you like remember what happens in The Sims 2 when their aspiration bar gets like really, really low? And depending on what their aspiration is, if it's popularity, if it's fortune, they have a complete breakdown. 
so there is a certain representation but it can be a little bit cartoonish and not very accurate to what happens uh, to people because I doubt that in real life if you're very interested in being rich if you're having a hard time you're just gonna sit babbling on the street with a sign it's not really what happens to everyone so I do admit there's a certain representation of mental health but not as accurate as some of us will like also with the traits being included in the sims 3 and the sims 4 there's also certain traits that do sort of convey the idea of mental health in the sims 3 you had a trait called insane that really didn't do much but portrayed that and then you had sims that were always brooding and so yes there's certain elements but again they're very cartoonish they're very sim like so they're not very realistic in terms of physical disabilities that's where we have an issue i think there's no representation at all for disability in any of the sims games there is a cane for example for sims that make it to the elder stage on the sims 3 but they just show it as like a natural progression of being an older sim and that's something that i didn't like because sometimes i will have an older sim that is very physically active and then they will be hunching back and will need like a cane or they will be looking at the hunchback of notre dame or something like i don't think it should be automatic to every sim to just hunch because they're elders but that's besides the point what i mean is physical disabilities i do feel they have not been represented enough i did like the whole reason why this video exists is because i wanted to get custom content for disabled sims in the sims 3 and I couldn't find any content anywhere. And while I was searching for the content, I stumbled upon different forums where seamers were discussing if we should or shouldn't have elements of disabled and neurodivergence in our games. And there were always certain people that said, no, I don't want it, I don't want this in my game. And some of their opinions, even though I'm not a disabled person, and none of my close uh, relatives or friends or anyone really close to me is disabled, I was slightly hurt by the comments of some simmers. They said that they didn't want to have disabled sims in their games because when they see disabled people, even in real life, they feel sad or they feel pity. And I was offended, like, are these people a joke to you? Why would you feel sad? They're not less than anyone. And that kind of roughed me the wrong way. Some people said that they used the Sims to escape real life. So having disabled Sims made them not enjoy the game as much. Other people said that they themselves were disabled people and they felt they couldn't represent themselves in the game because they couldn't. And it's the same thing as if someone that cannot actually make themselves in the game because they have a darker skin tone and they cannot accurately represent themselves it will be the same thing for someone that is in a wheelchair or someone that has any physical illness that makes them a little bit different so i do think that some of the simmers were not really thinking about everybody else because if you're disabled maybe you want to be able to make yourself in the game and you cannot do it because there's no content like that's even more insulting for someone that is disabled than for someone that has a darker skin tone in my opinion and then other people said that they do want to have the content but they would rather have the option to turn it on or off just like story progression aging or any other type of content at the end the sims franchise does not have enough content for disabled sims so it's not like we can actually pick and choose. In my opinion, I do not trust the Sims team to make accurate content for disability. I'm sorry, but I don't trust them. They cannot even get skin tones right anymore. So how can I trust them to actually get disability right? Something that is so different for each person that has a different illness. Like two people can have any disease, let's say fibromyalgia and they, experience it in completely different ways so again 
I cannot even trust them to make basic stuff. And I mean the current Sims uh, team. Because the theme for The Sims 2 and The Sims 3 were hitting it out of the park. I'm just talking about the current Sims team. Like, we can't get basic stuff, right? I don't trust them to get something as complicated as this to get it right. I mean, just recently, think about the whole controversy we had with the shrines in the last uh, Sims 4 pack. Like, I don't, I'm sorry, but I don't trust this team to handle something as touchy as this in an elegant and respectful way. So I do think that the best alternative that we have is for modders and the community to actually make this content. This is why I presented this video to you guys, just in case you're interested in having more representation in your game and you want to know where to get the content because to be honest it took me like three weeks to actually gather these items because not enough people is interested in getting this but for people like me that want to have a lot of sims that look very different this is very important some of the content here is not exactly what i wanted for example it was impossible for me to get a wheelchair that actually works it's, it was just impossible. So some of them are decorative and some of them, like the one in The Sims 4, can be used like a bike, but not the way that a real wheelchair can be used. In The Sims 2, as you notice, we only have content for physical disabilities, but there's a fair amount of it. In The Sims 3, there's pretty much no content for mental health. And I think that's because the traits were enough and the modding community didn't actually make that many traits and custom overall like custom content overall for this ability was very limited for the sims 3. in the sims 4 we have a lot of content both for physical disabilities and mental health i especially like having traits that can simulate certain diseases both physical and mental one of the traits that I couldn't actually get to work in my game was a dyslexia one that I really wanted to get, but I just couldn't make it work. As you are probably seeing in the screen or already saw, we have anything from bipolar disorder, Asperger's, there's quite a few selection. It's, it's very interesting. And in the terms of physical, we have um, vitiligo. Um, there's there's so much to choose from so there's a lot of content for the sims 4 so i hope this means that more simmers are interested in having more representation in the sims franchise but again i don't trust the sims team to be leading the way in this case and i do trust the modding community to be the one to make this content and make it accessible to people like me that I don't have any disabilities, I don't have anyone close to me that has any disability, but I do struggle like most people with my mental health. So I do know what it's like to wanna have a certain representation in your game. Uh, just one note, I also wanted to mention for The Sims 4 uh, base mental drugs, I don't think this is a mod that is for everyone. I do have it in my game because I do think it helps represent what real life is. But if you don't like to have such heavy content, it's your game. And I think it's your choice. What do you have and what do you don't want to have in your game? In my case, I like to have it because I do think that addiction is a mental health issue. And I do have certain sims that struggle with it. Most of them overcome it and I feel happy for them. So I do want to have a game that is as accurate and as realistic as possible. But I still won't get any alpha CC. That's what the realism stops for me. <laughs> so that's it for me, guys. I know this video might not be my usual content, but it was something that it was in the back of my mind and I really wanted to talk about it. I do think that we all deserve certain visibility and be able to make ourselves in the sims game which is a game that i love and i know that everybody's currently talking about skin tones and stuff but i do think that this uh subject it's also important so i'll be seeing you guys in the next video tag tag